the meeting to order for the City of Victoria Planning Commission regular meeting for Thursday, May 21st, 2015. First thing on our agenda is to approve the minutes. Uh, do I uh, hear a motion? Motion to approve. I have a motion on the table by Mr. Wayne. Do I hear a second? Second by Mr. Woods. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Meeting minutes pass. Next thing on our agenda is citizen communication. Anyone in the audience wishing to uh, address this commission on a subject other than what's on this agenda, please do so at this time. Okay, looks like we don't have anyone. We'll go ahead and close that and uh, open it up to development and review and formal actions. Good evening, commissioners. Good evening. Our first agenda item for the night is a final plat approval of Fox Creek subdivision section two and three. This is a 3.94 acre tract of land situated in the San Antonio and Mexican Gulf Railroad Company survey. It's located south of Ben Jordan at the intersection of Ben Jordan and Gallant Fox Drive. Here you can see the plat. The property is being developed into two sections. Section two is 1.09 acres and will be located on Aladar Drive, which is an existing local street. Section three will be 2.84 acres and will be located along Lenora Drive, which is an existing local street. Both streets will require extensions to accommodate the development and the owner is, owner is wishing to divide the property into five blocks with 19 single family lots. Water service will be provided by an extension of an eight inch line located in both Aladar and Lenora. Sanitary sewer will be provided by an extension of an eight inch line in both Aladar and Lenora. Uh, the right of way for both streets is 60 foot and drainage will be in accordance with the master drainage plan. Uh, staff has found that the proposed final plat is in compliance with all regulations and we do recommend approval. Um, I can answer any questions you may have and the applicant is here as well. Oh, I'm sorry, the preliminary was approved for this on March 21st, 2013. Chairman, approve. All right, I have a motion on the table by Mr. Caldwell to be approved. Second. Second by Mr. James Wayne. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Final plat approved on Fox Creek subdivision. Our second agenda item is a preliminary and final plat approval of Parsons Estate subdivision. This is located in the ETJ. Uh, within the 3.5 mile ETJ. It's located at the intersection of Levi Sloan and Parsons Road. It is a 9.33 acre tract of land situated in the Fulgencio Bueno League. Uh, the property, they're they wishing to divide the property into one block containing eight general commercial lots. It includes a right-of-way dedication to Victoria County of 17.5 feet along Levi Sloan and 25 feet along Parsons. Water service will be provided by on-site water wells. Sanitary sewer will be provided by on-site sewage facilities. Uh, Levi Sloan is an existing collector with 40 foot right of way currently and a proposed 17.5 foot dedication. Uh, Parsons Road is an existing secondary arterial with 40 foot right of way and a 25 foot proposed dedication. Uh, drainage has been reviewed for compliance with the drainage master plan. However, any improvements must be accepted by Victoria County as provided by the interlocal agreement. Staff has, re re staff has reviewed both and recommends approval. We find they are in the compliance with the minimum standards of the regulations. And I can answer any questions you may have, and the applicant is here as well. Yes, sir? I was just going to ask that same question I asked you. It, 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 it says commercial, but they're actually home sites. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Is there any particular reason? I know we don't have zoning, so what's the difference between the two in this application? Between commercial, having it designated as commercial and having it designated as residential? Um, well, as, as you said, we don't have zoning, so and beyond that, this is outside the city limits, so they could build anything on those lots, you know, barring some sort of deed restriction that would be placed on it by the, the uh, 
developer. Um, the other reason is um, if they were single family residential since Parsons Road is a secondary arterial, um, even though it's outside the city limits. In, inside the city, this, well, let me back up. The subdivision ordinance doesn't make any distinction. We have a requirement in our ordinance that says you're not allowed to have a single family residential lot that has direct access on a to an arterial street, which Parsons Road is. Um, in this case, it's, you know, these are over one acre lots that if they were commercial or any other land use would be able to have direct driveway access. So by labeling them as uh, general commercial, there's no variance required. It, the land use designation is really rather irrelevant outside the city limits. So, okay, thank you. And I know it's interesting to know because this, I don't know, it was purposely done this way then. Yeah, to avoid, there's nothing wrong with what they've done. It okay. simply avoids a need for, I don't know, a variance or whatever to the having direct access. If they're commercial, they're large enough that they'd be allowed a driveway by right. Uh, it's just, it's a quirk in the ordinance that's meant to keep people from having direct access to John Stockbauer, some of those kind of roads that are inside the city, Sam Houston, that kind of thing. You can, as you can imagine, that's not the ideal situation, so... Uh, and the regulation makes no distinction between when, whether you're in the city or outside the city, <clears throat> excuse me, or whether it's a one acre lot or 50 foot wide lot. Um, so staff has no issue with the solution at all, um, being a one acre lot. Now this is, again, one of those situations where uh, we're doing the preliminary and the final plat at the same time. And I was wondering if you could give us a quick explanation as to how that process is and, and why we do that. Sure. Um, the city subdivision ordinance allows the simultaneous submittal of a preliminary or final plat. So if the developer elects to turn them in at the same time in order to save, uh, to save review time, they're allowed to do that. Um, if we were to... I don't know, for some reason we didn't want to do that anymore. It would require an ordinance revision uh, to change that in the, in the city code, which obviously would have to be approved by planning by city council. And what's, I know there's a, also part of that same ordinance that uh, helps surrounding homeowner property owners. What do we do that is different from what we're required to do well, so that we can do a preliminary and a final and still give the public an opportunity to come speak to us. Sure. Well, we since because this has a preliminary plat with it, and uh, we are required to notify all the property owners within a 200 foot radius and offer a public hearing. State law doesn't require us to to do that notification, but it's it's something that's been in ordinance since 1992, uh, just so that we can make sure that the surrounding property owners are aware of what's going on. Um, but so there's a public hearing tonight for this. So there's still the opportunity for the public to comment. In this case, it's one phase. So the two documents, the lay lot layout is the same on the preliminary and the final. The only difference is, is the reconstruction plans that are associated with the final that have been turned in as well. So, um, so the pub, y'all, the city sent the uh, surrounding homeowners a letter a couple of weeks ago about this. Sure. Every property owner within two hundred sure. every happened. property owner within two hundred feet would have gotten a, a notification. Same thing with our variants. Y'all y'all are probably more familiar right. with the variants getting the surrounding property owners being notified. But the same the same notification happens with the preliminary plat. Are there neighbors within two hundred feet? Well there's at least there's at least one or two. <laughs> 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 it's it's to every property owner. It doesn't it's not necessarily whether or not there's a house. It's any any property that's touching there, so the, you so know that person yeah. got some. So someone across the across Parsons got a notice. Someone across yeah. Levi Sloan, and obviously the the property adjacent to it got a notice. I'd like to make a motion that the plat be approved. A second. Oh well, we still need. We a need to do. We got to do a public hearing first. All right. Is that? Is that? Yeah. No. Yeah. I I appreciate that. You know, I've had. A, concerns about that process in the past. I appreciate you explaining it. Uh, I guess the only other next logical question after that is, is why are there some that come before us where we do a preliminary and then a month or two later we view a final? What's the difference? 
that's that's something that the developers have chosen to do. Uh, you know, had, had, may have something to do with the workload of the engineering consultant they're using. They may be able to get that preliminary out. Um, Does it have anything to do with financing? I, I'm not aware that it would. Okay. You know, if, uh, if, if there have been cases where we've had uh, a, a variance associated with the preliminary plat, there's something that's not quite meeting code. So it's not unusual to have a preliminary plat that's going to have a variance, and that'll come as a standalone. The developers wanting to make sure they've got, they're going to secure that variance approval before they spend the money to. Uh, do the the detailed engineering that's required for a final plat. There's a lot more engineering in a final plat because of the construction plans that are associated with the public improvement plans. So, so let me throw something else in it. Yeah. So, so we we do this. We have a public hearing, and there's there's some issues. But then, if everything that is on this and it's this through the code, we're by law to approve it. Yes, sir. So. I mean, I remember having an issue a couple of years ago on something like that. So, you know, you can, mm -hmm. you're by law, we have to approve it. Yeah. So the only way we can do that, if somebody wants to bring it up to city council to see if they want to change the variance, uh, change the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the rules, you know, the timing that, uh, yeah. and so forth. Yeah. If somebody has that energy. Yeah. Yeah. So if that's, go ahead. I just had a question regarding the. The classification is commercial. I've been sitting there pondering that. If this was in city limits, you could not, even though they're one acre, you still could not have access on arterial, correct? If there was in city limits, as residential? Without a, not without a variance. Okay. So to get around that, we just label them as commercial, even though it's in the ETJ, I understand. But the only reason we're looking at it is because it could someday become city limits because it's in the ETJ. Right, right. So if it were to become an arterial, then you have something that would not have been approved in the city limits of Victoria. Correct? Correct. I, you know. Then it seems like we're kind of skirting it. I guess in some, in some manner we are. I think the intent of the regulation was really to deal with the city style lots that are you know, 50 foot wide and having, you know, multiple driveways on the arterial versus We wouldn't allow it in city, but we would not allow this in city limits. If, if the plat was, maybe I didn't answer that very well. As residential, if it, correct? Not without a variance. We would not allow individual residential lots to have driveways on an arterial in city limits of Victoria, correct? If they're already platted, we would, we, yeah, we would give them a driveway. Um, Depending on, on the arterial, right? If this was proposed within the city limits as residential lots on an arterial, we would not allow it per city code, correct? Correct. It's residential. As residential, but... But if they came I, to us in the city and said, okay, well, we'll just call them commercial, but we may build a house on them later. Right. They could do the same thing. In this, it, they could do the same thing. Because once, once the plat's filed, and they're just coming, and, and months later, a year later, they're coming to pull the permit, um, yeah, if it's a platted lot, I have no choice but to give them uh, a permit. Jaron, what you said, the city does not have means to regulate land use. Is that correct? Right. We don't have zoning. So, okay. you know, you can, a designation is simply a designation on the plat. So, and, but, so once it's a platted lot, whether, no matter what the designation is on the plat, if they come to pull a permit and the building or whatever fits on the plat, and, you know, I have to, I have to issue the permit. I don't have a zoning ordinance that prohibits that would say I can't issue a permit to put a house on a commercial lot or a commercial on a residential lot. It's a quirk of being an unzoned city. You're skirting the intent of reducing driveways on an arterial lane of traffic. Yeah. You're partially following the intent because rather than a 50 foot single family lot you now have a hundred foot lot right so it does end up being less driveways overall 
but you still have driveways onto an arterial. Which still have driveways onto arterial, but if it allow. was commercial, you'd have that same number of driveways. So we we still wind up with okay. you know eight driveways. I on. just wanted to make sure I understood the designation of making them commercial, so it doesn't have to get a variance. Right. Even though they're not going to be commercial. Well. Fundamentally, I have kind of issue with that, but it's due to the community we have, so. As does most of Texas. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. That's all. Any more questions for the from the commission? Anything more? If not, I'm going to go ahead and open up to a public hearing on this subject. Anybody wishing to address the commission on this uh, particular subject, please do so at this time. All right. Please uh, state your name and address. And please limit to the for five minutes. It's just short. Okay. Uh, Kenneth Marbach, I live at 7238 U.S. Highway 77 South, Victoria, Texas. My question is, I'm, I don't, I have some property over here near this, but water stands on Parsons Road, and in that area right there, and that 25 foot that's going to the county, who's going to take care of the drainage on that? Commissioner. I think county commissioner. Uh, county commissioner is in charge of that, <laughs> sir. The county commissioner county for that precinct. All right. Okay. And the reason I'm, I'm asking that is because I'd come in here uh, in 2009 and had a, a subdivision done, and I had deeded the 25 foot over to the county, and as far as my finalizing my uh, drainage, mm -hmm. I needed to cut a ditch across to the county ditch, which the county ditch needed to be lowered, and there's need to be. Um, driveways lowered. Well, the county commissioner is telling me that I can't do any digging in there because I've deeded it over to the county, which I need to do, and the drains need to be lowered. So I'm kind of at a catch-22 on a situation like that. So that's why I was wondering about the same situation here. I think I, I would take it, in my opinion, you would take it up with the commissioner's court. Okay. And talk to them about it because Evidently, you deeded it to the county, so it's their land then. Exactly. So they should do something about it. Or and the thing about it is my downstream neighbor will not allow me to lower the culvert in his driveway, which I understand, but I'm trying to do that. So, Commissioner's Court's where I need to go? I'm, that's my opinion. I mean, anybody else? Is that Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Marbach. Okay, anyone else? If not, I'm going to go ahead and close the public hearing. We'll open up to uh, our deliberations. I don't think... I knew I had a, I had a motion on the table a while ago before we had a public hearing. Is that motion still there? We have a motion to approve the preliminary plat and final plat by Mr. Wayne. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Mr. Caldwell. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Preliminary and final plat approved by this commission. I'm sorry, here is the plat. Sir? <laughs> I forgot to put up a slide of the plat. Oh, we got a picture of it on there. <laughs> We're all right. Our third agenda item is a preliminary and final plat approval of Brownson Road subdivision. This is another subdivision in the 3.5 mile ETJ. It is a 14.14 acre tract of land situated in the HG Austin survey, located near the intersection of Brownson Road and FM 2615. The owner is wishing to subdivide the property into one block containing seven single-family residential rural lots. It includes a right-of-way dedication to Victoria County of five foot along Brownson Road. Water service will be provided by on-site water wells. Sanitary sewer will be provided by on-site sewage facilities. Uh, the existing local road Brownson is currently 40 foot of right-of-way and we, they will be getting a five foot dedication to the county. It has been reviewed for compliance with the drainage master plan. However, any drainage improvements must be independently accepted by Victoria County as required by the interlocal agreement. Staff has reviewed the preliminary and final plats and found them to be in compliance with the minimum requirements for single family residential rural. And we do recommend approval of the preliminary and final. And I can answer any questions you may have and the applicant is here as well. I guess that road is acceptable pretty it will meet at least the rural condition. standards for right. since it's in the ETJ it is allowed to meet the rural standards and it will at least make, meet those Hold
hopefully the county is looking at this and dealing with any kind of drainage deal. That's something that they have to look at. <clears throat> Flooded when I drove by. Yeah. Sir? It was flooded yeah. when I drove by. Okay. But then again, so is half Victoria County. Yeah, well, so, yeah. but yeah, it, it was, there was a lot of water there when yeah, I drove I by as well. Water. Okay, if we don't have any more, you have any more questions, I'll go ahead and open up to a public hearing. I'd like to open up to a public hearing. Anyone wishing to address this commission on uh, this particular plat, please do so at this time. Okay, I'll go ahead and close the public hearing. We'll open up for uh, commissioner's deliberations. Do I hear a motion to, on the table? So moved. Okay, I have a motion by Mr. Woods to approve the, that. and a second by Mr. Rasheed. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Preliminary and final plat approved for Bronson Road Subdivision 1. The next item is a final plat approval of Spring Ridge Subdivision, resubdivision number one. This property is also located within the 3.5 mile ETJ of the city. It's located near the intersection of Spring Ridge Road and Parsons Road, and it is a 2.805 acre tract of land situated in the Fulgencio Bueno League. And it is currently lot eight and nine, block three of the Spring Ridge Subdivision, and they are resubdividing into one lot. Uh, the lot will meet sing single-family residential rural <laughs> standards. They are also wishing to abandon an existing 0 .0994 acre right-of-way dedication and instead dedicate 0 .0948 acres further west on the property. This land is being used as a turnaround and they are wishing to move it further down their lot. And it will serve as a turnaround for the entire Spring Ridge Road. Water service will be provided by on-site water wells. Sanitary sewer will be provided by on-site sewage facilities. Uh, the existing local road, Spring Ridge, is a 60-foot right-of-way, and it has been reviewed for compliance with the drainage master plan, and any drainage improvements must be independently accepted by the county as required by the interlocal agreement. Staff has found that the final plat meets the requirements, the minimum requirements for single-family residential rural, and we do recommend approval of the final plat. I or the applicant can answer any questions. She is here tonight. So another one in the ETJ, if we approve it and it goes to the commissioner's court and they don't approve it, does it come back to us or? No, sir. All, all plats in the ETJ, we haven't, this interlocal agreement means that there's one authority approving them. So our, interlo our interlocal agreement with the county is the city reviews and approves their the plats within ETJ. It's just one approval authority. The county is part of the review team. All of this is shared with the, the commissioner. Uh, of the precinct, but the planning commission is the final part of the agreement is the final authority for all plats in the ETJ. Okay, the so does that mean that then drainage issues should be something that we're looking at when we're looking at these? Not, I mean, we're, we're reviewing them to make sure that things comply with the master drainage plan, but the county, I don't have the specific interlocal agreement in front of me, but there's some unique things in the interlocal agreement related to drainage. This one, there's nothing, it's basically they're removing a lot line that used to I be know, two but I lots. I didn't, didn't get to ask the question on the last one, so I'm <laughs> okay. jumping in. Yeah. Okay. So, Jared, they just want, this is one lot, and they just want to be included in the neighborhood? They're already in the neighborhood. It's currently two lots. It's going to go gotcha. to one, and they're simply moving the, that bulb of the cul-de-sac further north. Further north. Okay, so they bought property. It's, two lots, right? it's two already, lots. it's two lots. Gotcha. It's all, all that's already within the subdivision. They're simply erasing the lot line between them and moving that bulb part of okay. the cul-de-sac north. Easy enough. Question, if you will. Uh, <clears throat> what is the, the purpose of the wiggling of the street? I don't know. Do you know why they're wanting to move the bulb up? I would, the applicant may be able to speak to it further, but my guess would be to get the cul-de-sac further down where if you end up at the end of the street, you have you the cul-de-sac. Cul-de-sac. Move um, the cul-de-sac to the end of the it's, street. It's a cul-de-sac, so my guess would be, t so if you end up at the end of the street, that you're able to make that turn around, whereas now it's kind of in the middle of that lot. Probably not in, in front of his house. Yeah, instead of being in front of his house, he wants it at the end of the street. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it used to be. And if and when the property to the northwest of that is platted and developed, and that other, the other part of that 
uh, cul-de-sac radius will, would be developed, be dedicated then. Has, has the county accepted that? Until the improvements are uh, maintained or, or built on it, they don't technically accept it. So you can, in the county, with, with, by replatting it this way, we're able to remove the right away and move, you could literally move it like we're doing this. Things are different in the county than the city. But, um, it looks, to me, it looks like a maintenance nightmare. Well, it's, it's, currently, it's currently where you see it in the middle of the lot, and they're simply moving it to the back. But When you said the county uh, is part of the review process, I guess that's during the when they're reviewing the construction plans? Yes, sir. We share, uh, we notify the county commissioner of the, whichever precinct we're in uh, when the plaque comes in so they can come in, review it, make any comments. Um, I, some of the engineers may even share that with the commissioner beforehand. I'm not sure. But uh, we make sure that they're involved and notified as soon as we get it. Any more questions? Did it answer you, Mr. Wayne? I just want to make sure that the county has accepted it because, it's, like I say, it's a maintenance nightmare. It's not really any different than what's there. It's not any different than what's there. It, were you just moving it down from what I understand? Yes. It exists where it is in the middle of the lot today. They're simply asking to move it down. So if it's a... If you want to call it a maintenance nightmare, to use your term, it's currently a maintenance nightmare, and we're just moving it. Um, it's just a larger... Of moving it, can't, can't we do away with it? The turnaround is necessary so that when, uh, when people get down to the end of the street, the street literally dead ends there, so it's a, it's a way for people to, to maneuver around and, and turn around if they get down at the end of the street, whether it's, whether it's a private vehicle or an ambulance. There needs to be something down there for people to turn around. If someday the street were to be, I don't know, extended further you know, north, then you know, it, it might could go away and be moved further up or be reconnected into some other part of the, the property. It's just it's just a cul-de-sac. I mean, I'm, I'm good with it, but I mean, I'm just, I don't know how, uh, any more delivery? No. All right. If not, let's go ahead and. Uh, I move to approve. We have a motion on the table. I second. And, all right. Second, second by Ms. Seen. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion passed. On the uh, Spring Ridge subdivision, re subdivide. Thank you. Our next agenda item is a preliminary and final plat approval of Quail Creek Terrace, phases two and three. This property is also located in the 3.5 mile ETJ, uh, located near the intersection of Pheasant Drive and East Grouse Road. It's a 15.88 acre tract of land, and they're wishing to divide the property into single family residential rural lots. Sorry, missing a page on my staff report. <laughs> uh, they are proposing to divide the property into 46 single-family residential rural lots. The lots will be accessed via Blue Jay Loop, which is a proposed local street with 60-foot right-of-way. Uh, the owner has submitted a final plat for the project, which solely covers Coal Creek Terrace Phase 2. Uh, the preliminary plat covers Phases 2 and 3. Um, Phase two consists of two blocks containing 23 single family residential lots out of the 46. Water service will be provided by the Quail Creek Municipal Utility District via a proposed six inch main located within a 10 foot utility easement along Blue Jay Loop. And that's connecting to a six inch main located along Pheasant Drive. Sanitary sewer will be provided by the Quail Creek Mud via both existing and proposed six inch mains both in Blue Jay, Blue Jay Lane right away and the surrounding lots. 
and drainage has been reviewed for compliance with the master drainage plan, but any improvements must be independently accepted by Victoria County as required by the interlocal agreement. Staff has reviewed the preliminary and final plats and finds they both meet the minimum requirements for single family residential contained within the subdivision and development regulations. And we do recommend approval of both. I or the applicant are here to answer any questions you may have. Anybody have any questions? Go ahead. Can I? Yes, sir. What was the final outcome on the road? You were going to ask the engineering department whether or not it meets city standards. Oh, again, that will at least meet the, uh, the city rural standards. Did that one time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, we don't have any more questions. We'll go ahead and open it up for a public hearing. Anybody wishing to address the commission on this uh, item, please do so at this time. All right, I'll go ahead and uh, close the public hearing and we'll go deliberate. Any... Move to approve. Final I have a motion on the table by Mr. Woods to approve the preliminary and final plat, second by Mr. Canning. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Quill Creek Tourist Phase 2 and 3 subdivision passed. Final. Bam. Preliminary and final. All right, next thing on our agenda is other business. Uh, for the monthly development report, we built 2.29 million in valuation for single family residential this, or last month, uh, 5.8 million in commercial additions and repairs with 591,000 for new commercial for a total of 8,699,000. Uh, this is compared to the valuation of 25 million in April 2014. We issued 182 mechanical <laughs> electrical permits, mechanical electrical plumbing permits in April compared to 211 last year. And we collected 53,937 in permit fees with 27,000 coming from buildings. And that's compared to 401,000 in April 2014. We received three minor plats in April for the Victoria Electric Co-op, Leslie Miller Subdivision, and Victoria Retail Village. Uh, we received five major plats in April, the Quell Creek, Spring Ridge, Fox Creek, Brownson, and Parsons, which we just went over. And we received four site plans for Atzenhofer South Display Lot, Victoria Electric Co-op, an Energy Transfer Building Addition, and the United Rental Building Expansion. And the amendment to the sign ordinance went to City Council in April and was approved for its final reading. All right. Okay. There's no other business. We'll go ahead and items for the Planning Commission. Any new stuff that you can tell us? <laughs> Did Luby's renew? Oh, <laughs> they, they were yeah, up in every month. Man, you must every say. month. They yeah. did. They, they, did, did, they that? did not. They did not. So <laughs> I, I, I think that permit has expired now, or some, sometime in the next few days. So he's so firehouse Chipotle, Panda and Express. Oh God! I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> All right. As you can see, things have. Slow down a little bit, uh, a lot on value, you know, valuations. You know, last year we had a number of apartment complexes, and so I think we were close to ninety million dollars in permit activity this time last year. We're at fifty-two million uh, this year. So, um, but still lots mm -hmm. in terms of number of permits. There's still a, a lot going on. The single-family residents were at thirteen. That's that's holding fair, fairly consistent across the months. Love to see that number double, but. <laughs> We're trucking along. All right. Anybody else? Anything else? If not, do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Have a motion by Mr. C. A second by Mr. Woods. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Y'all have a great night.